Good morning, First Christian. Thank you so much for coming to worship with us today. Those that are tuning in from home, welcome to be with us on this Palm Sunday. If you have not received your palms as you came in the door, please run back and grab one. Uh, we have a lot going on this week as it is Holy Week, the countdown to Easter. But we are going to begin by saying welcome to Miss Dorothy Patterson. Uh, we have borrowed her from First Baptist today. As you will notice, that's not Casey. Uh, Casey is at home with COVID, and uh, we understand it has affected several other members in our church. So please be cautious and um, uh, make sure to enjoy and jump in. Our key word for today is flexible. We are being flexible. Uh, if you look inside your bulletin, we have a lot going on. So first I want to start with our handouts. Uh, first we have um, one of our special offerings, and this goes to the general ministry of, of the church, so please make sure to read over that and make that special donation. Our Easter lilies, which our um, area up here will be covered with lilies next weekend. If you would like to make one in honor, memory, or given by, uh, today is your last day to turn that in, so please make sure to fill that out and drop it in the offering plate as you, as you come forward. We're going to start by looking inside our bulletin on that back page. Compassion and service team this week are, are collecting soap and washcloths. So as you come in, if you could drop that in the box on, in the back. Um, and our own Kendra Howell is going to be participating in the Road for Hope. We talked a little bit about that last Sunday where she will be bicycling from Raleigh to Washington, D.C., and this is in honor of those officers who have fallen in the line of duty. And today, yep, there we go, yep, bicycling. Yeah, if you missed that keyword, on a bicycle. Um, today, after, church, after worship, um, the deacons and junior deacons and those who would like to step up, we are going to start doing communion by passing the plate again. And so those folks are going to be held after class, and they're going to get a little tutorial on how we're going to do that. So if you can just stay after worship, come on up front. Scott's going to walk us through that, and the deacon team will do that together. Now we can flip to the back side, and the highlights of the week coming up first we want to remind everybody that mobile music ministry tomorrow will be postponed. There are other Mondays, uh, so we will just push that back when Casey is feeling better. But Novel Book Club will meet on Tuesday. Choir rehearsal, not sure about right now, so watch your emails for an announcement. Thursday will be our Monday Thursday service right here at 7 o'clock. On Friday at 2 o'clock, we'll go to the Good Friday service at First Methodist, so just right around the corner. And then next Sunday is Easter, and we are excited to celebrate Easter. We'll have a great worship service, and uh, directly after, we will have an Easter egg hunt for the kids on the playground in the middle. So kids, make sure to bring your Easter baskets with you so we can collect lots of eggs and treats. Now, as I said, today is Palm Sunday. Do you have them? Everybody have them nearby? You've got your palms? In just a little bit, the choir is going to process in with some music, and as they come by your pew, please stand, join in the waving of the palms, and then that we may have a song or two later, we will have that opportunity, and then as you leave today, if you do not want to take your palms home with you, if you could just lay them in the center aisle, much like those when Jesus entered Jerusalem did and, and laid them on the road. Grab that, enter it on the center aisle as you leave. We will be collecting those for use later. So please make sure, if you're not going to take them home, just to leave them behind in the center. And we have one other special announcement today. I think I got them all off the top. Uh, today is somebody's special birthday. Now, we don't do this every Sunday, but today is a 97th birthday. So, Miss Martha Beanland, let's turn and give her our attention. And Gilda, will you lead us in a birthday song? Hit it, Gilda.
We love you, Martha. Thank you for being here to worship with us. Today is a special day as we think back at what Palm Sunday was in the life of Jesus, as we think about the life of our own church today and moving forward. We are glad that you are here to worship with us. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is good, God is good. All, the time. all the time. God is good. Let's worship. Good morning. The first reading today is from Psalm 118, 1 and 2 and 19 through 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Now, please stand and join me in the call to worship. We come to prepare for the holiest of weeks. We will journey through praise, praise with joy on our lips. We will travel, travel through the trail, trail of death, death. Pray, pray and hope, hope to be in our hearts. hearts. Jesus leads us through this week, and we will follow. For he is the life we long for. He is the word who sustains us. We Setting aside all power, glory, and might, he comes, modeling humility and obedience for all of us. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. blessed is the one who brings us the kingdom of God.
Please join me in prayer. O oh Christ, you entered the city as a poor man, not in style, but simply. Yet still you caused uproar and questions everywhere. You drew the expectations of a hungry crowd and brought varied conflicts to the light. May we, who are sometimes swayed by the crowd's approval and who often avoid conflict for fear of its cost to us, hold fast to the gospel of peace and justice and follow faithfully in your way of compassion and solidarity. With those who are poor and excluded, wherever it may lead us. Amen. You may be seated. Our next text is from Mark, verses one, Mark 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The word of God for the people of God. Morning, Gilda. Here they come. How are you this morning? Good. Here, oh, thank you, sweetie. Hugs are the best. Hey, Noah, here he comes. Well, we kind of couldn't miss what today is, right? We could not. One of the most exciting things on Sunday. Oh, it's the most exciting. You liked waving those palms. Yeah, that is kind of fun, because we remember what happened on Palm Sunday, right? Yeah, what happened? I just forgot. You just forgot. Okay, well, we kind of had a hint a few minutes ago. Jesus came in, and everybody was so joyous, waving their palms, greeting them. And then things changed. Do you remember what happened? It wasn't long after that that the people traded a murderer 
for Jesus. Because people sometimes get a little confused and forget what's important. Now, we've been doing a good job on our faith journey during this season of Lent. But I bet there might be an Easter basket in somebody's future next Sunday. You see it. Well, sometimes we can forget what's important. So today, we're going to have two prayers. I found this. You like jelly beans? We're not going to open them. This is called the jelly bean prayer. Yeah, they do look like eggs. They're called jelly bird eggs, tiny jelly bird eggs. So I'm not saying it's not okay to get excited about that Easter basket. I, I like some candy myself. But maybe this will help us. Yeah, they're telling you the colors, and I'm going to read that out just in case somebody out there needs to know. Red is for the blood he gave. Green is for the grass he made. Yellow is for the sun so bright. Orange is for the edge of night. Black is for the sins we made. White is for the grace he gave. Purple is for his hour of sorrow. Pink is for our new tomorrow. So I want you to take this and help you next Sunday remember what the true meaning of Easter is. And we were not not going to forget that. I love your smile. So now we're going to have our own little prayer. And you can repeat after me, okay? Dear God, thank you for the sweet treats we may find in our Easter basket. But never let us forget the sacrifice Jesus made for all of us on the cross. Because he lives, our sins are forgiven. Amen. second reading from Mark, this is a little later in the gospel. This is Mark 14, verses 1 through 11. Listen now for the word of God. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival or there may be a riot among the people. And while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. 
But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But she will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. This ends the reading of God's holy word. May God bless those who hear it, who keep it, and who share it. So Palm Sunday, as Miss Jeanette just really did a great job of illustrating, Palm Sunday gives way to Holy Week pretty fast, doesn't it? Jesus shows up in this humble yet very affirming entry into Jerusalem, But the sense of joy is short-lived. As modern-day hearers of this triumphal entry story, we are meant to hear it, wave our palms, in my experience, shout our reluctant hosannas, and thank you, one person laughed, and then, (laughs) tough crowd, tough crowd, and then move on. Because so much happens in between Jesus riding into town on that colt and then Jesus being raised from death next week at this time. There's so much ground to cover, even before you come back on Thursday night for the Monday Thursday service. And in a perfect world, you'd all be here for that service as well. So it's my duty to call your attention to the absolute breadth of scripture that is devoted to that time frame that I just described. Mark, in, in, the, in the Gospel of Mark, three entire chapters cover the time between Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem and the start of the Last Supper. That is 25%, uh, nearly 25% of the entire Gospel. And the percentage is higher in, in, in other Gospels. But the problem is, it's just not the kind of uplifting scripture, like devotional kind of scripture that we tend to prefer. But I want to tell you that taking some time each day during Holy Week, even if you just open up to those, those chapters and chapters in between Palm Sunday and Monday, Thursday, and and read even a chapter. It's spiritually fulfilling, and I think it raises your, heightens your awareness of what happened at that time. What you'll discover is that Jesus is within the city walls, he's in the temple, and he's taking on, you know, the highest religious authorities in Judaism at that time, and he's taking them to task. And Jesus is on edge. I think his anxiety level, understandably, is very high. He's committed to his mission. And by this point in time, uh, he knows his time is now. It has arrived. And he's not backing down. And I would argue that the rhetoric that he uses uh, serves to make sure that those who are in opposition to him aren't going to back down either. He and they are on a collision course with the cross. And his followers, his followers then and his followers now, are along for the ride. And there's a cadence that happens during the beginning of Holy Week, Monday through Wednesday. Jesus comes into the temple and he teaches and preaches and he's pressing all of their buttons, believe me, And then he withdraws, and I think he kind of goes into hiding almost. There's some frenetic commotion uh, that happens. 
The passage that I just read from Mark sets the stage for what is to come. And in the passage that I just read, there's three figures at work here, and all are cementing their places in history. Jesus is kind of a bit player in the passage that I just read. He is doing his Jesus things, and he's confounding everyone. Judas um, is doing what a Judas would do. The name Judas has become synonymous with uh, being a turncoat or a traitor. Fate will judge Judas. Although, as an aside, I want to know a lot more about Judas as a historical figure. I find Judas to be so fascinating. I think that his name has been redacted, pulled out of uh, much of scripture, rele relegating him to simply being the one that betrayed Jesus. But we know he was a loyal disciple for years prior to this moment. Um, we know that prophecy stated that someone would betray the Messiah. The tale of Judas's plan to betray Jesus is the bookend to the more memorable part that happens in the middle. The woman who anointed Jesus is the third historical figure in this passage. And Jesus states, truly I tell you, so you know it's important, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. There's a couple problems, though. We don't know her name. We don't know anything about her. We don't hear her voice. She's nameless and faceless. And like too many other, just like so many female followers of Jesus, her name and her words would certainly be worthy of our full attention because she is the rare follower of Jesus who seems to comprehend who Jesus is and what he's doing. Her anointing of him serves actually two purposes. First, she anoints, and the way she does it by pouring the oil over his head is the same manner in which a king is anointed. Second, she anoints him for burial, which he knows is coming, and she knows is coming, but the rest of the followers seem to be in denial about. She understands the significance of this moment in time in a way that his own disciples don't. And remember, Jesus had a lot more than 12 followers and a lot more than just male followers. Regrettably, we cannot argue with Jesus' assertion that the poor will always be with us. But that moment in time that we are still talking about thousands of years later and remembering from centuries ago was worth commemorating in the way she does it and the way that we are still talking about. Holy Week is the ultimate week of our faith. Jesus and his followers both all go through so much. The triumphal entry is nice, but it's not worthy of staying with, even for one full service. Resurrection Sunday next week is our ultimate high point, the truly transformational moment of our faith. But what, what happens in between is hell for everyone. Jesus, as we know, is going to endure emotional and physical and spiritual torment, trauma, and death. His disciples are going to have an impossibly difficult week. True to who they have always been, each step along the way, they are going to get it wrong frequently. Only this time, I think their actions are scrutinized more than ever. 
And it's easy to make the mistake of looking at the motley band of followers that Jesus has and think, I'd never do that, but rest assured, you would. All of us would make the same mistakes. But here's the thing that doesn't get mentioned in Scripture enough or paid enough attention to. Jesus needed the men and women who followed him. He learned with them even as he taught them. None of us, including Jesus, are meant to go through life without a tribe, without companions for the journey. That doesn't mean they don't make mistakes. We know that they did. There were times that they deeply disappointed Jesus. And I'm sure there were plenty of times when they became very angry with Jesus. Through all the misunderstandings and disappointments, Scripture shows that they stuck together. And they helped G- carry Jesus through all the trauma. And, the end, and in the end, that confused group of followers transformed into apostles who birthed the Christian church and carried Jesus' movement forward to this day. The events of that week could have splintered that group of followers forever. It would have been easy for them to fall prey to finger pointing and to give in to the disappointment, the monumental disappointment that they had to feel and give up and just go home. But they didn't. In a time that they could have become fragmented, instead they were galvanized. We all, what we uh, know that happened to the disciples between Jesus' death and Jesus' resurrection is one simple sentence. It says they rested and observed the Sabbath. How interesting is that? It leaves so much to our imagination, doesn't it? But no matter what happened, we know that they remained faithful and they stayed together in community. And so may it be for us as well. And so to end this whole series on mindfulness, I want you to be mindful of this, your spiritual community. Because I've already seen it. No one here is perfect and put us all together, and we are much less than perfect. But the hallmark of Jesus and his first followers is that they stayed together through thick and thin, through the high of Palm Sunday and the suffering of desertion and the cross. Through it all, they stuck with one another. And to me, that's more than a sign of mere loyalty. That's a sign of real love. And my prayer is that First Christian Church will stay and become an increasing place where we stick together and we celebrate with each other and we bear with one another's shortcomings. A truly beloved community. Let it be so. During uh, any point in the service that you feel like coming forward, if you've been waiting five weeks, this is your last chance. To uh, come up during a hymn or during the silent time of the prayer, you can write down on a purple sheet what your hopes are for our community or light a candle. Amen.
Will you join me as we look at our prayer list and additional people that we would like to add today? The first one you have not heard of at all, those of you who may know Tori Osgood, he is the chairman of the Camp Caroline Committee. His wife, Christy, took a terrible fall, as in broken bones, and she is actually incapacitated and he is looking after her, taking care of her. It's not good. She will recover, maybe, hopefully, down the road. Would you keep her in your prayers? Also, Alice Thomas, Bobby Deans, who is a friend of Patsy Farrell's, Linda Walling, Jojo Near. Robbie Piner. We ask prayers for the family of Donna Harris, who is Laura Pritchett's aunt, who passed away on Friday. We ask prayers for the family of Frances Prouty, Melissa Whitley's grandmother, who passed away March 17th. If you have any concerns, please put them on a prayer card that is located in front of you and place them in the offering plate. As we enter into this time of prayer, you are asked to silently pray for each person listed on our prayer list and to reflect on the things weighing on your heart. 
Our prayer is for wholeness, healing, and joy for all. Let us pray. Eternal God, help us. Help us to move forward in becoming a beloved community, a community that cares for one another when one is hurting and bears with one another when our humanity is showing. Help us to continue to move forward, being gracious in all things and loving in all things. Help us. This morning, God, our faces are turned along with Jesus's towards Jerusalem and the cross. In the coming week, help us to be fully mindful of the significance of Jesus's journey and sacrifice in our own lives. Help us to be mindful of the ways we might give a little extra of ourselves, our time, our energy, our resources, small sacrifices that we might make to raise up the community around us. Help us to be mindful of our role and our community as bearers of light and bearers of love. In this holiest of weeks, help us, O God. Help us to remain faithful, to remain steadfast and true and committed to our faith and committed to one another. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. At 60 years old, Jenny Tackner was ticketed while driving under the influence. That moment was a wake-up call she needed to get clean. I ended up at Daytona Beach Drive-In Christian Church because I wanted to go back to God, she recalls. Three years later, Jenny remains clean and sober and now serves as the volunteer leader at Renew Recovery Cafe, a ministry of Daytona Beach Drive-In Christian Church in Daytona Beach Shores, Florida. The CAFE is a peer-run organization supporting the development of mind, body, and spirit of individuals affected by substance abuse, mental illness, and homelessness. 
I live in an area where there are a lot of unhoused individuals. I see plenty of familiar faces and transient individuals wandering the streets and have even witnessed three overdoses right outside my home, shared Kristen Aja, the Director of Administration for the Renew Recovery Cafe. When doing our community and special offering. Compassion and Care Ministry, Christian Unity, Interfaith Ministries, New Church Ministries, Higher Education, Leadership Development Ministries, the list goes on and on. Your generous gifts enable the general church ministries to connect disciples within the church and connect disciples with the world to bring healing and hope to all of God's children. You will find an envelope in the bulletin today for your gift or simply write Easter special offering on your check. Thank you. This is the point in the service where you have the opportunity to uh, present your gifts. If you uh, have a gift with you to, to bring, uh, you can support the Easter offering today or obviously next Sunday. And it's a reminder that your gifts do uh, help support the ministries of this church as well. Let us now praise God through the giving of our gifts.
communicate these gifts. Let us pray. Oh God, we give thanks for the call to gratitude that you stir in us in all seasons, especially in this season where we are so mindful of Jesus' sacrifice and the call to present ourselves as an offering to the world around us. We ask you to bless now these gifts, the people who will receive them, and to bless each giver as well. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. As we embark on Holy Week, we are mindful of the, of the first time communion was served at the Last Supper. We are all invited to come as we are for this feast for God's people not because we are perfect, but because we are loved and adored. Will you pray with me this morning? Lord, as we come to this table, we are singing hosannas and giving thanks for you. Help us to be mindful of everything that goes on this week and everything that happened to Jesus on this Palm Sunday. I have to let my imagination go a little crazy here, God, because I can see it. I can see these things happening. But Jesus kept looking forward and his mind was on the cross. Help us to keep our eyes on the cross as we go through this week. Now at this table, the bread and the wine, let us again be mindful of your presence here and for what these emblems represent. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Amen. We remember on the night that Jesus was betrayed and deserted, that he gathered with his friends for a last supper. As they were eating, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and told them that this is his body given for them. And in the same way, after they ate, after they ate he took the cup, blessed it, and told them that this is his blood used to seal the new covenant in forgiveness of their sins and ours. And this is the feast of God for the people of God. You can now take and eat and drink in remembrance of him. You'll now please, please rise as you're able. We'll join together in the prayer that Jesus taught his followers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Before I offer a blessing this morning, can we thank Miss Dorothy Patterson for blessing us <laughs> folks this was a last second call that she answered Dorothy we are so grateful to you now a blessing for us as we go on our way this day may the love of God May the peace of Jesus the Christ and the comfort and challenge of the Holy Spirit carry us through this holiest of weeks. Go now in peace. Amen. <laughs>